It's working. Martha, before I check, here's a list of instructions for when I'm human. One, don't let me hurt anyone. We can't have that, but you know what humans are like. Two, don't worry about the TARDIS. I'll put it on emergency power so they can't detect it. Just let it hide away. Four, no. Wait a minute. Three, no getting involved in big historical events. Four, you. Don't let me abandon you. And five, very important, five, don't let me eat pears. I hate pears. John Smith is a character I made up, but I won't know that. I'll think I am him, and he might do something stupid like eat a pear. In three months, I don't want to wake up from being human and taste that. And six, well, it's Friday, and you know what that means. <laughs> If all the world is a stage, and we're the players, then life is the play. I think it's time to start the show. Happy Friday! It's the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. Sadly, this episode will be shorter than most for a few reasons, which I'll get to in just a moment. Who is John Hurt's doctor? And what about that horribly cheesy intro to his character? From what I understand, he's the real ninth doctor, but never called himself the doctor. So would that, would that make Eccleston the 10th, and Tennant the 11th, and Matt the 12th? Now, I understand that at least 11 doctors have kept the tradition, and numbers really shouldn't play a big part in this, but don't Time Lords only have 13 lives? Does that mean that, that, that the Peter Capaldi's doctor is going to be the last incarnation of the doctor? I don't think I can take this. <laughs> in my mind, Matt Smith should be the 13th, considering Rowan Atkinson will always be a doctor to me. Say hello to the spikes of doom. Say hello to the sofa of reasonable comfort. Naturally, I anticipated your journey back in time, and so I traveled slightly further back and bribed the architect first. I am curious to see, though, how Peter Capaldi is going to act as the doctor, especially considering that his age it reflects more of the earlier incarnations. I mean, the whole dynamic of the show will, will dramatically shift because, yeah, as we know, the Doctor's always had a bit of a Benjamin Button syndrome. Matt Smith has been the youngest person cast to play the Doctor, and since then the show has been filled with so much vibrant energy and, well, youth. Look, hold on. I'm gonna give the guy a shot. I, I, I will. I mean, I gave the show a shot. It impressed me. And then I gave Tenet a shot. And he impressed me. And then I gave Matt Smith, even him, a shot. And I was blown away. I like Tenet better, to be honest. I still do. But Matt's great. Just not as good as this. So here's to you, Stephen Moffat, for helping to revitalize the franchise in its later years. Please don't mess it up. Now, in light of the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, I've decided that I'm going to release a little personal project of mine, if you will, that kept me occupied in the last few months of my senior year in high school. I won't go into too much detail here because that's what the playlist intro is for. However, you can check it out by clicking on this lovely picture back here. The big one. It's a completely fan-made episode that slightly semi-bored on a class project and involved a lot of the drama students and newscast students from that high school. So I hope you enjoyed as much as I and my friends did. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get packing for that last reason that I may have mentioned. You see, I'm going to be out of town this weekend, sipping tea with, well, the big cheese himself. I shall see you all next week. Oh, I almost forgot. Life is a wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey play. And the play... Oh, bugger it all. The play is the thing. Stop! 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 Stop, BZ! Stop me! Lines are being
jingle bongle, dingle dangle, yickety-doo, yickety-da, ping-pong, lippy-tappy-toota.